Welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Clover podcast. Uh, if you haven't noticed, and I'll get the links put up on this and some of the others, I have uh, made it to YouTube. So now I can go and tell my mom that I'm finally a YouTube star like she always dreamed I would be. So things are looking up for the podcast and especially for me because I'm definitely going to be a superstar. But today we're going to change it up a little bit and I'm going to have a co-host and that is Miss Caroline Mays. And she is a Northwest Regional Rep, as well as a uh, Clinton County 4-H member of the Lathrop Shamrocks. And our guest today is Libby, Libby Indicott, and she is a Northwest Regional Rep and a D or Davies County 4-H uh, <clears throat> member, as I just stumble all the way through there. So, how's it going this morning? Oh, we're good. We're hanging in there. You seem like you're really enthused about being stuck in the house again. Well, there's four or there's four of us kids in this house and two adults, and we've been stuck inside of each other more than we have probably ever been. So we're hanging in there. So you all should know each other pretty well by now if you didn't before. Yeah, pretty much. You're very bonded now, right? Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> Sibling bond all the way. <laughs> So what's this experience been like for you? Um, well, we've been getting some work done around the house and I've been able to do some things maybe I won't be, wouldn't be able to do during the school year because I'm more at home and that helps a lot. Um, but being stuck at home isn't really fun and I guess that's for everybody, not just me. Are you staying involved in 4-H? Always. Um, we, I have a sheep project and I'm out there every day working with them and then doing some more experimenting with my food project. So what is your favorite project that you do in 4-H? Um, my favorite project is probably my sheep project or my photography project. Um, for my sheep project, like I said, I, I raise lambs, so I raise my own lambs, and then we go and show uh, statewide and countywide and all that. Um, I've been able to get many new friends and learn so much. Uh, but then with my photography project, uh, it kept me a way to keep in close with my family as a lot of them are picture takers. And we like to, uh, I like to capture the moments that maybe we won't remember quite as well as years past. How long have you been a 4-H member? Um, let's see here. I'm 17 years old, so what's, that's, that's about 10 years, I believe. 10, 9, 10 years. Me and Caroline actually share the same birthday, so. <laughs> yeah, birthday twins. <laughs> Interesting. So do you guys do anything to celebrate? Have we? Not in the past. We usually see each other at the state fair, though. Yep. <laughs> So, what is your favorite 4-H event, Libby? Um, well, my favorite 4-H event is probably Camp or Congress. Just Congress is just a little bit bigger than Camp, and I get to see everybody throughout the state. But Camp is probably where my heart lies, as it was one of the first 4-H events I got to go to. And I finally eventually came out of my shell at 4-H Camp. How did you react to camp being canceled? Because I know for a lot of that. I was crazy. severely devastated. Um, this year was going to be uh, my fourth year as a counselor. And then my sister finally got to be a counselor this year. So she was excited. Um, and I also had a lot of campers I was really excited to see. And so now I'm really sad. <laughs> That's something that we've been talking about, the other YPA is like, so let's say we get to go back, life resumes and goes back to normal. What are we going to be doing to camp? We'd even talked about having a meeting, what, like one night going to camp and just be like hanging out, just say we were there this year. Oh, yes. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, I wonder if we could throw a weekend camp together. That would be cool. During like the fall, that'd be cool. 
like like the camp and lock in combined. I agree. <laughs> there we go. I don't see what could go wrong with that. <laughs> so, what's your experience been like as being a Northwest Regional rep? Um, well, uh, this is, or I guess this next coming year will be my second year as a regional representative so i'll be i've been on the board for two years um i've been lucky enough to serve caroline um seth anson and Braden constant and a lot, we're really close me Braden, and seth uh, are all the same age and grow up there and with each other and caroline's been right there with us so <laughs> to all know what each other's thinking when we're thinking it has been helpful and then all the people on my state council board are amazing and I wouldn't ask for a better team. So you're super involved in 4-H obviously. <laughs> um, how has that involvement really like affected you? Has it helped you like outside of 4-H and like school work? Um, yeah I do believe so. I, I've been like I said, when I was younger, I kind of had a shell, and then 4-H kind of helped me break me out of that shell, and I've been able to do more things like public speaking and demonstrations, um, being able to talk to people just a little bit better, um, seeing people that maybe I wouldn't have talked to, like at the state fair um, and other big places like Congress and all that. Yeah, there's been quite a few other people that I've talked to and that's been one of the biggest things about you know that 4-H has brought to them is being able to come out of their shell and meet new people and talk to new people making network connections and really growing from that um did you I don't know if you guys watched the episode I did with uh Sarah Townley but her she had a 4-H had a profound uh, impact on her and she talking about how she didn't really fit in in school and stuff like that but 4-H was so accepting of her and everything about her and welcoming her that she really took off and and you know blossomed and she's doing well as a YPA right now with you know bigger dreams of being a, a specialist because of that which is really cool to see from you guys. Yeah believe it or not Libby was super shy when she was little. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't believe either one of them because as long as I've known Caroline, that you talk talk quite a bit. Oh yeah. <laughs> believe it or not, both of us were extremely shy, barely talked to people. <laughs> Always clean to the counselors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, that's like uh, Kira Thompson, since I've been here, we, she was at the, our shooting sports safety and, um, you know, her parents were like, hey, you got to stop talking. I've never heard her talk so much in my life. She just like finally came out of her shell and I was like, I, and she's using hand signs at the same time and I'm trying to keep up with her and she talks a <laughs> hundred miles an hour and she's like, you haven't seen me like this. I was like, no, you usually don't say anything. So when you guys go from not talking to talking like all the time, I'm just like, when did this happen? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So do either one of you have plans for uh, the executive team to try to run for uh, an office there? Um, since I am a year older, I don't know about you, Kara, but um, – I think next year would be my technically be my last year as a being able to be a regional representative. So I think I'm gonna try to be on the exec team. Um, if you didn't know this, my aunt is a legacy or is a legacy 4-H'er, and she was actually our state president one year when she was in 4-H. So I want to try to keep going oh, no. with our family. Libby, even I didn't know that for as long as I have known you. <laughs> Well, you, you had your brother as a... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I, it kind of figures because, you know, you are, you know, related to Pat Wood and she started 4-H, so... <laughs> yes. <laughs> totally. Um, when I get this, I'm going to get a well-written Facebook message or comment about that comment that I just made, so... <laughs> 
So uh, for those who are listening, we have a, uh, uh, in the Northwest region for our camp, we have a camp bingo going around. And on one of them is uh, have your picture taken by Pat Wood. And one of my friends who's a few years older than me, oh, he's what, five years older, if not more, he was like, yeah, everyone has their, has had their picture taken by Pat Wood at camp. So, I mean, that's, except for, you know, the, what, last year, last, is it yeah. just been one year that she hasn't taken photos? Yes. So the new crop of kids, they might be, you know, we're finally getting those generations where she's not been taking photos, but. No, but she will still be there. <laughs> oh yeah. She will never retire or leave. <laughs> she won't leave, no. <clears throat> It's, it's, it's pretty interesting, but. I will say I've never been to a camp either week without grandma, so. We love her to death, though. I'm her favorite, don't tell any of the other ones. So. <laughs> hey! <laughs> I, I think sh she likes me the most. We have, a, we have a running inside joke, and I embarrass her more than anyone else, and it's hilarious. So Libby, do you think any of your siblings will be on state council or uh, follow in your footsteps? My youngest sibling, I think he'll be the most outgoing. My next two siblings, my sister and my brother, they're more the athletic two. Uh, they're all sports all the time. Um, but no, I think I think my youngest brother, he's gonna he's gonna be able to do some great things in 4-H and other activities hopefully during school. Um, but 4-H is a big part of our family, and I I think we'll, we all will keep going through it. And I'll, my kids will most likely be in 4-H and all other kinds of things. So what are your plans looking like for after high school? I honestly don't know as of now. I've gone back and forth between a gazillion different things. Um, I want to say more maybe on the agriculture side of things just because I am a farm kid um, but I don't know where to go from there. Um, I've also been looking at maybe a National Guard uh, but I haven't been able to get my ASVAB scores back since we've been in quarantine so I don't know entirely on that part. Ooh, interesting. Yep. See that's why these are fun because I get to learn more about you know the kids and everything well I, you, you and about probably half the other people that know me because i don't like talking about school <laughs> stuff because again i have no I absolutely no idea <sighs> so yeah so what was one project that you did in 4-h that someone who who knows you probably would, didn't even know about it like um you know maybe cake decorating photography uh, rabbit showing if you're Kyle Hansen, yeah, showing that. dogs. Um, I actually did one year, I did a, the physical education course um, through our 4-H program where I went and taught kids like more about physical experiences and then did also did more sports activities. Maybe I wouldn't try. Um, I think one year uh, I did like a croquet tournament and a couple other things. Yeah. You know how to play croquet? I do. We need to bring that to camp. Ooh, I don't know. That probably swinging something like that probably wouldn't go well. I could see how we that could would do go. We do bocce ball. No, that should be easy. Mm. We got we got to limit the uh, the injury risk with you kids. <gasps> Casualty. You know how crazy we are up here in Northwest Corner. <laughs> Some games get intense. Oh, yes. <laughs> I still remember tug of war burns on my hands. Me too. I still have scars from that game, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. If not physically, emotionally, is that what you're trying to say? Definitely. Yes. <laughs> Years of Zach and Kyle beating us. Just <laughs> uh, I, I got a question for both of you. What's your most fondest camp memory okay. um can you go first while i think because i mm -hmm. know 
I don't know. I have quite a few. Exactly. But there's not one that there's not one that just stands out. Well, okay. There was this one year, um, and well, I wasn't there particularly, but um, I was sitting with grandma at the picnic table, taking a break from dancing because I was younger at that time and couldn't handle all the dancing. <laughs> even. And um, I was sitting down and um, oh goodness, what's his name? I had it, and now I don't. Um, oh, Anthony McCollum came over and sat down, and Grandma just kind of looks at him, and then he knows he's in trouble, and it's just the funniest thing ever, because if you know Anthony, Anthony's from Lane County, so he's not actually a part of the Northwest region, but we invite Lane County kids over to camp, and just the look she gave him, he knew he was, he was gone, and so yeah. Probably the best time is I, my fondest memory are all the counselors I've had and all of their stories. So. Yeah, I'm same with the counselors. My probably fondest memory is one time at the dance. It was like my first year, so I was super shy. And John Lang, one of the older counselors, he uh, took me with a split phone and we took a little picture. It was so funny. <laughs> a flip phone? You guys know what flip phones are? Wow. You. <laughs> That's impressive. Libby, I have seen that look from Pat Wood numerous oh, times. Wow. Except for my problem is, is I start laughing when she gives it to her. Like everyone else just locks up. And I'm just, when she gives that to me, I'm just laughing. And then she starts laughing. <laughs> she gets even more irritated with me because I'm laughing. You get that look at her house, then you know you're in trouble. So, <laughs> but. Again, I'm the favorite, so I don't see that look very often. It's it's more of the younger ones that I see that look. Yeah, that's understandable. So what was what was it like going from a camper to a counselor? Was there a, a big change for you, or how'd that feel? Uh, well, I have attended camp all six years, or all six years I was able to as a camper, so I think that kind of helped in knowing what I was getting into, um, maybe just a little bit of difference of being more in charge and actually helping with the kids instead of being one of the kids. Uh, but all my all my campers are good, are great. Uh, I love them all. And seeing, being able to grow up and then being cam a camper with half those kids and then the next year counseling half those kids, it, it makes me feel old. Um, but then um, if we ever get to go back to camp, um, my last year of camp, well, if I get to go, um, will actually be my youngest brother's first year of camp. So um, I, I feel like I love, I love the role of being a counselor. I love seeing all my kids and have, making sure they have a fun time because not all of them get to experience or age life outside of camp. So you talked about like being a camper with some of the kids that you were like later a counselor to. Uh, was there anyone that was like close in age that you were super close friends with that you were like a counselor to? Because I know like me with Carly Shuey, that was odd my first year having to be your counselor. Um, I know one year, um, Braylon Wyndham, uh, I've been a counselor with her the last two years, but um, my first year she was a camper and that just me felt weird because Braylon acts and you're always acts older than she is and she's an amazing person um and then even though she's not really close in age my sister is two years on, younger than I am and so then going from being a camper with her to being a counselor is kind of interesting I had Braylon on here and like <laughs> she is such a competitive person she is and I was like, everything was about competition. I was like, is, is, there's more than that. And she was like, yeah, but you know, <laughs> she just, it's just who she is. And it, it cracks me up, especially when it comes out, you know, uh, what was it? Uh, what did we play uh, Newcomb last year? And she, you know, just, just so fired up about that, about everything, you know, and her cabin won almost all the challenge 
ca- cabin challenges. Uh, yes, I believe that. Yeah. That. <laughs> Those games get intense. Oh, yes. <laughs> like I said, I remember, like, when Zach and Anthony and Jensen were all there, and it was oh, like, yeah. that was scary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we had to have Sean tell them to calm down at least okay. 10 times. Yes. Um, Steven, I don't know if you know this, but um, before, long before you came, um, it would be tradition that the uh, boys' cabins, since we have the two boys' cabins and then the one girl cabin right there, it would be tradition for the boys to fill water balloons and cover them in shaving cream. And then when we'd have downtime outside <laughs> and we're just kind of getting to know each other, they would attack us with those water balloons. <laughs> <laughs> Every year. Every year. Yes. Um, I don't know when it stopped. I can't remember. But all I remember is one year with Kelly Paul taking one to the face and half my face just being covered in shaving cream. <laughs> That's awesome. I I get I guess probably the throwing of the uh water balloon was probably why they got rid of it. That seems like it. I, see, I don't know. I don't know. But probably the mess having to clean it up. That too. <laughs> That's been interesting, especially when it comes, uh, we've got cabin flags, you know, and then somebody leaves them and then the other ones, and then it's a boy and girl rivalry if the guys pick it up and, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember flags being left out in the rain and they just being ruined. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite part of camp? Both, well, as, as a camper and now as a counselor, because I, f- I feel like that will change a little bit. Um, uh, probably as a camper, my favorite is probably, I'm just going to say the dancing, because you know me, I'm a dancing kid all the way. <laughs> um, Started my first couple of years, maybe doing just a couple, and then up to my last year as a camper, being able to do them all nonstop. Um, but then, as a counselor, I probably liked um, watching my kids and learning, and like when we stay up late and do kids play awards, like learning more about them and how they maybe opened up more throughout the week. I do, I do love my camp- campers so. It's always fun when you see those kids because there's always and, and there's different so many different personalities and you know one of my uh, one thing that I really enjoy is like Keith Farmer is probably the most person most prepared person to come to camp even the staff like and be like boy I wish I had this and Keith's like oh you do now and he's like opens up his survival kit you know for his 21 days in the woods that he's gonna have and he's got everything in there that always cracks me up about you know camp is when those kids come and like Keith and they they obviously have a good time but they're well prepared with everything I had a camper one year and every time she'd answer us she said yes ma'am and no ma'am and it was just the cutest thing ever. Yeah, yeah. The, oh, sorry, Caroline. Oh, you're good. You go. <laughs> no, I didn't have anything. It's it just, you know, when kids show up and they show respect like that, it's, you know, sometimes it gets to be a, a lost art. Yeah, it's crazy all the different kids you see come through. So what was the process like for you? going to be a regional rep did you make it on your first try um actually no I think I had filled out the form two years before I was finally elected as regional rep um my first year I don't think I made it past the interview process uh, and then my second year I made it past the interview process and made it to congress but I just wasn't quite where I needed to be or where the others thought I needed to be um as a person and there was several other since we only get four there were several other people that were good candidates and so then after the next year i was finally this year i was finally being able to be elected and that was probably most one of the most exciting things um because when um 
this last year when we were elected, we all stood on a dance floor because we have a dance every night and that's when they announce representatives and we stood in a circle and we knew there was only going to be four of us, but we were all happy for each other and it was probably one of the best moments. Of the year. Yeah, we got a lot of compliments having everyone of the Northwest region out there. That's really cool, you guys, especially you guys supporting each other because, you know, there's going to be times where not everyone makes it and that's just the reality of it, but to still support each other even though, you know, because and somewhere throughout our, you know, time here, we've all had that where we don't make it, and you know, we could have or should have or would have or whatever it may be, but to still have that support from your other uh, people and especially in 4-H is, is huge. I quote this hard, and that's just maybe just because I 4-H is a big part of my family. But I quote that 4-H is my family, and I can always rely on everyone to be there. Absolutely, and that's so that's so true. Is you know, it's especially I think that's one thing about camp is camp really just builds those bonds of friendship, but like every year when you leave, you're just like, there's kind of like a little bit and, you know, just pulling at your heartstrings like, oh no, like we had this time, didn't know a lot of them sometimes. And then you build it and build it. And then you're like, oh yeah, these are my best friends. And then you're like a year before you may see some of those kids again. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know what I'm going to do next year. Hopefully we have camp next year, but next year is technically my last year. It would be my last year as counselor. And if you, since you have met my grandmother, you know how her emotions, like, are very sensitive. <laughs> I have a tendency to carry on those emotions. I, like, they're super high in me, but, like, my sister, they're very low. This is, like, a robot. But, so, yeah, i probably going to break down. Like, grandma and grandma's probably going to break down with me. Very much so, Libby. <laughs> oh, around that campfire when they... Let the retiring officers basically or the camp I'm counselors gonna, leaving. Libby's I'm gonna leave with that word. <laughs> Seth's gonna have to say it all. <laughs> but no. No, it's just gonna be a mess. <laughs> hey, just remember you you've got a year, so I do. I do. Be prepared. That that's that's always a tough one. Like I remember Claire Stoodles and some of those that really, you know, stood out to me. I was just like I didn't even re hardly knew. I didn't obviously know that many because that was my first year. Camp was here last year. So going through that and seeing the impact and everything, that was a yeah. pretty cool deal to go through. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of our last two years next yeah. year, too. Yeah. Is, is next year your last year, Caroline? Or you got uh, one more? I think it's going to be my last year. Why? Uh, just because I'll be busy. The because I'll have graduated and be going off to college and next year. You got a year. You're younger than I am, aren't you? Yeah, but then next year will be my last year, and then because the next year is my senior year. Oh, I got you. You're in take yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You've wasted my life, so I'm gonna be there as long as I can. <laughs> so, are you both gonna come back as volunteers? Absolutely. I'll probably, you're probably going to have to swap me away with a plus water. I mean, I'm just going to be there as long as possible. <laughs> oh, yeah. Both of us will be back, I bet, many times. <laughs> so have any of you thought about going to be a YPA or a 4-H specialist? I actually have thought about that just because of grandma and just being 4-H being, always being there. Um, but again, my career path is kind of just like, completely jumbled so I don't know yet me too <laughs> yeah it's it's always interesting and you have people like <clears throat> Sarah Townley who you know that was her heart set her heart was set on on doing that and that's what she's accomplished and then there's people like me who just wander back into 4-H after a few years of uh being away because I, I went through and then what was it 2009 something like that was my last year in 4-H oh I don't know if I if you guys have heard I told Debbie I said Debbie uh you were my 4-H specialist 
my last year of 4-H and she's like no I wasn't it's like I never went to any events but yeah and so she didn't believe it I was like yes because I remember Dale I remember you and she's like no and I finally found pictures on our Q drive and I or no it was a flash drive or something and I pulled them up and she was like oh no she's like I'm not claiming you though (laughs) (laughs) That's crazy. Dale is a name that I've not heard in a long time. <laughs> I I try to get Dale, and he is so busy all over the the world. It seems like with yeah. his uh, well, uh, dog show stuff, but I try to get him every chance I can to come back and be a judge, and uh, it hasn't worked out yet. Uh, but I hopefully we can get that done again. Yeah. Dale was the one that kept us dry and safe. <laughs> Can you write? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> You're safe. How about that? Okay. <laughs> safe, but... <laughs> the dry part, not so much. <laughs> Allegedly. Now, don't be trying to get us in trouble here. Listen, it's interesting to say the least. The best part is when <clears throat> Sean tries so hard and he's really good. And you can tell he's a 4-H specialist through and through. But then you get that one tiny crack in his armor and he breaks loose. And then it's just, it's so hilarious. And we're like, Sean, what are you doing? And he, He's laughing, like playing basketball, getting him to play basketball, Kyle and Seth and everyone. It's hilarious because he, he's full on staff and everything. And I mean, even when he's playing basketball, he still is. But when he just breaks loose and then he starts, you know, uh, talking trash while playing basketball, it's hilarious. Because it's like, it's a different side that you get to see than oh, yeah. most of them. <laughs> oh, so have you done any public speaking or anything like that? Public speaking, I don't think I ever did one of those events. I know I've done a a whole bunch of demonstrations. I probably can't list all the ones I've done. Um, But yeah, just mostly demonstrations. I also did fashion review, which I know that doesn't take talking, but it still takes some skill, I would like to say. So did you and Caroline compete against each other in fashion review then? We might have when we were little. Yeah. It's been so long, I don't remember. Yeah. I remember going to, like, when we used to have, um, what was it, like a regional, like, stay fair, not at Bethany necessarily, but, like, down in Boone, Ca- Boone County or somewhere like that. No, when no, I think I do remember what you're talking about. Going to, like, the mall and doing stuff there. Yeah. Oh, are you talking about, was it interstate? And that yeah. was at, at yeah, in yeah. St. Joe there? Yeah. Buchanan County? Yeah. Why did I say so? Start with a B. We were kind of close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was one thing that kind of, I mean, I guess it's still going on, but the participation just hasn't been the same as where it was prior to when I started here. So it's it's always interesting when that, you know, stuff comes around. It sound like a cool deal. What was your experiences like there? What did you take projects? How did all that work? Um, well, you do. You were able to take projects. Um, then, but then there was also stuff like doing demonstrations. I know I did a couple demonstrations at Interstate. I did fashion review at Interstate. But then um, they also had a talent show at Interstate. And um, one year, I remember. Most people may not know this about me, but I am a or second degree black belt in taekwondo and so one year for my talent I did what we call a form which is a series of movements put together and like kind of like a dance but it's not really dance uh, and doing that during the talent show interesting do you still compete um we taekwondo isn't really we don't really compete a whole lot I have competed in um we do have a one or we do have a contest in Bethany and then there's also one in Iowa I participated in um 
but we don't really compete. Taekwondo is more of a self-defense class, and so uh, we do more self-defense. Interesting. You you need to try uh, jujitsu, try classes yeah. with that. I've I've been taking those because I I have enough friends who in there, and I have two friends who own a gym in Platte City. Uh, total different experience when you go into martial arts and stuff like that. It's it's pretty awesome though. So where do you go? Where did you go to, for your classes? Um. Well, my instructor he does have a school here in Gallatin. That's where I live. Um. And then when he was he was a little bit bigger and um. He had his school in Cameron, but now that he lives in Kidder, but so now he doesn't do his school in Cameron anymore. Um, but he does still have his one here in Gallatin that we go to every other, every so often. Is Ledger Grooms in that? Because yeah. he come, he'll come to our, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to talk no, over you. He'll come to our 4-H council uh, meetings and he'll ha still have a gi on sometimes. Yep. Uh, Ledger, Ledger is... Ledger's probably one of my four eight or favorite four eighters from Caldwell County, but there's a lot. So, um, <laughs> um, no, Ledger Ledger is does do taekwondo with us. I think his sister does too, or one of them. Oh no, I guess his little brother does too. Yeah, Libby says that about a lot of her campers. I love <laughs> them all. Okay. <laughs> It's weird when we see them come through the office, the campers, and we're like, <clears throat> I, every now and again, I'll ask Debbie, be like, is, are they really that age? And Debbie's like, I don't know. So we'll go look at 4-H online because it, it seems like you go, all oh, should be, you know, still campers. Yeah. <clears throat> but, you know, you're transitioning into counselors and we're just like, wow, where did the time go? Oh, yeah. Mm. Me, I know. Because <laughs> how old am I, Stephen? I don't know. What kind of question is that? Like, don't put me on the hot seat. I don't know. Y'all, y'all should be about fourteen or fifteen to me. Yep. That's me, boy. I'll, I'll tell you what. Last year was uh, the first time I got graduation cards from kids, and I was like, "Have I been here that long?" Here's what one of four uh, H kids said. She's like, "Stephen, you do a good job." and it's been an adventure and i was like yeah that's probably the best way to describe me as the ypas it's, it's an adventure that's for sure oh yes definitely i agree with that statement oh uh, it's it's definitely a good time it's it, it's different you know and then you think about being you know role models and do you view yourself as a role model do you guys view yourselves as role models i do yeah what was that like for you when you realize, oh, hey, I'm a role model and other kids look up to me? Um, well, I don't know, uh, just being being around kids um, and seeing, seeing them want to be like you, I guess. Um, I do have this little girl, I do, I play basketball and I have this little girl in my town and every time I see her mom, she's like, oh, she claims you that you're, you're her basketball buddy and she looks up to you, so you know you got to you got to be doing good and you have a little little one behind you watching your every step and I just kind of warms my heart but then also kind of makes me nervous because I don't want to do anything to upset anyone or um, maybe influence bad things. What about you Caroline? Yeah kind of same with me it was kind of weird like realizing it like, I didn't, I guess I didn't really realize it until I was, like, able to be on state council, that I was, like, a role model. But, like, realizing it, it's, like, you don't want to do anything that's going to influence bad things, because all people are watching you. And Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting time when you make that transition, and you, you see that happen, and then someone's like, oh, you know, my my kid looks up to you, and all this stuff, and then you're like, Man, and then you think like, I've been pretty good here recently, right? And then like everything, I remember going through that in high school and stuff like that. It's it's an all always an interesting time to you know think about that where you're in that position as a leader and as a person yourself. 
So have you participated in all the uh, state 4-H events, Libby? I don't think I have actually. Um, like I have never been to YCLS, um, which is kind of, I really kind of wanted to go this year, but being in the house of, uh, with three other kids and having a sheep project and lambing during that time is always hard. Um, um, there's another one that I know I haven't been to. Um, team, con team conference, I've only, I only attended one year, um, which I was kind of disappointed in myself with that. But then other than that, I've been to Congress all years I've been able to. And so, yeah. Do you guys like Congress or conf Teen Conference better? See, I only, I only have one year, so I can't really compare. <laughs> um, Congress has probably been better just because I've been with those people longer than I did was with them at teen conference. Like not many people from around my area go to state events like teen conference until after I've been through because I'm like Becky Simpson, I'm her like role model through like her, her counties. And so putting me through that, most of that first and then, then explaining to kids what goes on and then seeing them go through is kind of what we do. Yeah, I would say it's a lot different because at Congress, you have more time to become like close with those people and you've known them for longer because like some, most of them go to teen conference, some of them don't, but you have more time to get closer to them. So I would say I like Congress, but I thought teen conference was super fun too. I mean, I love teen conference. I, I haven't been to Congress. Uh... Teen conference was interesting for me because when, you know, you have 10 people that you're chaperoned for and I only knew two of them and you're trying to make everything work. And of course, I'm always super nervous <clears throat> and probably a little more paranoid. You know, all the other people are, you know, mostly you're going to be parents that are like, yeah, we've had kids and have kids and know what it's like. And then you have me who's <clears throat> single and has no kids. And it's just like, uh, they're all fragile and you don't want anything bad to happen the whole trip. And, you know, I get a little just like on edge about that. Yeah. Well, my one year I did go to Congress, even though she wasn't my chaperone, or conference, even though she wasn't my chaperone, grandma went with me or grandma took me down there. And then she was across the hallway from me. So like, that was easier and scary at the same time. Well, then there's no... But you guys stay at a hotel, right? Yep. For Congress. Then there's she's right there, and she'll stop all the shenanigans from happening. Oh yeah, her stories. You <laughs> oh, the stories we have from Congress, Libby. <laughs> tell them. I do tell. No one's watching this thing, so I want to hear <laughs> what what stories you guys got to share. Well, okay, I'm not proud of this. Okay, <laughs> but I am blonde. Okay. <laughs> And so my first, my first year, <laughs> I've heard of this story many times. My first year, I was always just kind of antsy at Congress. And I'm walking, and we're walking to lunch, or we're walking to opening ceremonies. And I'm getting ready to cross the street. And so all of a sudden, when somebody yanks me back, it turns out there was a car coming from my <laughs> blind side. Um, and so I couldn't do that. And then about... Two minutes later, I'm trying to do it again, and then again have to be yanked backwards because then it, there's another car coming. So then the rest of the Congress that year, I had a platoon of like Kyle Hansen and Jacob Hall and Hunter Todd, like all around me. They wouldn't let me cross the street alone. And like, I couldn't go anywhere without like a wall of people around me making sure I was paying attention. <laughs> and then that happened again <laughs> the next year. Yeah. No. Yes. Uh, yeah. We okay. So teen conference, go through this speech that the kids behave and all that stuff as we go into the. Uh, we're on campus, and I, of course I didn't think look, to tell them to look both ways, and they just jump out from behind a bus. Which luckily there was no one coming, but it's just like, come on, kids, look both ways before you cross the road. 
and I clearly need to make sure if I ever chaperone again or I'm around Libby that I make sure she <laughs> receives that message. Yes. Yeah. I've gotten better. I do have to cross the street with at least one person still. But. <laughs> oh, at Congress, you don't tend to be alone, so usually I'm safe. Caroline, what stories you got from Congress? Um, well, most of mine are just hanging out with Libby and Maddie, watching Vampire Diaries, FaceTiming Libby so Libby can watch it with us. Yeah. <laughs> you do what, Winnell? You Did you say FaceTime? Yeah, I would FaceTime Libby because she had to go back to her room. Yeah. So she can watch it with us. <laughs> two people in a room. <laughs> so, yeah. You guys crack me up. So you FaceTime and then watch it through the tiny yeah. video. Yep. Oh, you guys crack me up. Oh, yeah. And then we eat Nutella tortillas because, you know, Caroline's addiction to Nutella. I introduced you guys to those. You do what now? I take like a. Uh oh, we're all froze. Well, I'm back after a breaker blew in my house. My internet shut down, lost power, lost everything, it seems like. We've also lost my co host. So it's just Libby and I. She's going to wrap up from where we were. And we were talking about Nutella and what was it, her creation? So we take Nutella and tortilla shells, soft tortilla shells, and you just pretty much put the Nutella on the tortilla shells and then you wrap them up and eat them. It's the best creation she's ever, probably ever made. We snack on those all the time. Why? Why <laughs> those two? I don't know. I eat tortillas with pretty much everything. I do like a peanut butter jelly tortilla shell. I do like chicken fajita tortilla shells. I mean, I can do, I can eat tortilla shells all the time. Yeah, I do tacos and fajitas, but I don't put peanut butter and jelly on them. Oh, yeah. They have and, cheese rolls. And... Interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, we, after our technical difficulties, is there anything else you have? Do you have questions for me? Anything you want to say? Shout outs? Anything like that? Not really. Um, everybody, I guess, be safe get outside but not with people um it's, it, it's cold today but i should get better because we're in spring now and um keep working on your projects because you know that's one thing that we're doing here in my house is trying to get projects done and learning new things so. awesome well i thank you for joining me and i'm sorry about the technical difficulties and i know you guys got schoolwork and stuff to do so I will let you go. Thank you. All right. Thanks for joining me and see you all in the next episode.